Today, I'm running down some of the most common concerns that you've told me you have about moving overseas and telling you why they shouldn't be concerns at all. Hi there, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist. It's where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. And for many people, going where you're treated best means some kind of move. You want to move overseas to activate certain tax benefits, keep more of your own money. You want to open up new investment opportunities or find a new place to park your money, open up ways to do that. Uh, you want more personal freedom. You want to be left alone. Uh, you want to have a better lifestyle. Uh, these are all ways that moving overseas can improve your quality of life, help you build generational wealth, uh, improve your freedom, all things that are very important right now. Uh, but I put together a list of reasons why Westerners in particular don't want to move overseas. And uh, our friend over at Colin Talks Crypto helped assemble this into a nice convenient list of why people who think they should move overseas actually don't. Uh, number one is moving away from family and friends. Number two is language barrier. Number three is lower living conditions in many places. And number four is loss of first world conveniences. Those were the four most common reasons why people don't want to move. And I want to address each of those, starting with family and friends. You know, we've talked about this for a long time. Now, uh, I come from a rather Protestant background. Uh, we're not hanging around uh, every day with each other. Uh, when I lived in the United States and I lived near my family, we would see each other every once in a while. We'd talk on the phone. Uh, you know, I'd occasionally go and visit more extended family members. Uh, I was not hanging around in someone's house every day. If that's you, it may be more difficult. And I've seen people where I had a guy once say, listen, man, I'm at my grandmother's house four times a week, no joke. And I'm like, people say that. But it's usually not the case. If that's really your case, if you're at your grandmother's house 200 times a year, then this may not work for you. And if you need that and your grandmother's not going to move with you, then you may want to stay. But you know what happens most of the time? I just had this conversation with someone about a week ago. Oh, we want to visit family. I said, okay, how often do you see the family? Uh, you know, three, four times a year. I said, okay, that's pretty manageable. Now, I'm not talking about giving up your citizenship. If you do that, depending on what citizenship you replace it with, you may or may not be able to go back to, in the case of uh, Colin, the United States. Right? So I'm not talking about expatriation. And as long as you have an expatriate, you can go back to your country and you can po poke your head in every once in a while. And, and by and large, if you're not poking your head in for too long, uh, you can continue to, to enjoy the tax benefits. Uh, you can continue to enjoy the much superior lifestyle and the people and what have you that come from living others overseas in the countries we talk about. You don't have to suffer for too long in the U.S. or wherever it is you're from, you know, people from London with the bad weather. You don't have to suffer and you can still keep most of the benefits. So if you were going to visit your family, you know, four times a year, maybe what you want to do is you want to say, oh, you know what, I'm going to stay within a six hour flight. Sometimes people say psychologically, let's say they're from the US or Canada, they want to live in Central America or maybe as far down here as Colombia because it just feels close enough. They say, hey, you know, Asia, the flight's not that much longer or Europe, the flight's not that much longer, but you know, it's over water and it feels uncomfortable or they'll say time zones are an issue. They want to call their family. So those are things to consider. Uh, you know, stay close to home so where you can go back and do those, you know, four one week trips uh, every year and still keep most of the benefits of going where you're treated best overseas. What I would also suggest is, you know, bring family and friends with you. There are residence and citizenship by investment programs where you can add parents, parents in law, children, adult children in some cases. I mean, why not make it a family affair? And I've seen people where they say, listen, I've got three kids, two of them want to come with us, and the other one maybe will get him set up in case he changes his mind. Why not bring people with you? If you believe in what you're doing, why not try and convince your family? And if your family is totally opposed, if your friends are totally opposed, why are you going to sacrifice what you believe? Why are you going to sacrifice your goals? I have been on conversations with guys on a couple of occasions where they are in tears crying. And we've had to really have like a real heart-to-heart uh, -heart conversation where their girlfriend, uh, it's always the girlfriend, I think, doesn't want to travel. And for them, listen, they're, they're coming to me and they're paying because they want help with the taxes. But for some of these guys, it's a lifelong dream to go out and see the world. And they wanted to bring their girlfriend with them, but she doesn't want to go. And I've had these guys that are so emotional about the fact of like, what do I do? And I, I say, I said, are you, you know, if you're 27 today, for example, what do you say when you're 37 years old and you gave up on your dream to see the world and take part, you know, some of these guys are investors, you know, take part in opportunities, you know, see what's going on, maybe start a business, whatever it is. Um, this is not just a travel blog, but, you know, all the things that come from the lifestyle, the opportunities, the money-making opportunities, everything. Um, are you going to give up on that? What are you going to think when you're 37 years old? 
right? If someone is so diametrically opposed to what it is that you want to do, or if you believe, hey, my country's going down the chute, um, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm worried. Are you going to, listen, maybe you want to save your family, but uh, are you going to like go down with the ship because they insist on going down with the ship? I have a lot of people that I talk to that are like, listen, my parents think it's dumb. Um, they, they're going to stay in the U.S. or whatever the country, they're going to stay no matter what. If the whole place falls apart, they're like, hey, I'm going down with the ship. Are you going to go down with the ship to satisfy your parents? I got the greatest permission slip when I was uh, young from my parents, go where you're treated best. And they said, listen, we'll take care of ourselves. You take care of yourself. And uh, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to meet, meet up with my parents. You know, again, we meet up, uh, we've met up a number of times in, during the year when I live in the U.S. We do that now. Um, and I think, you know what, I've inspired certain people in my family and friends to say, you know what, Andrew's doing it. This is doable. I can do it. And some of my family and friends have made investments, purchased properties, gotten their second passports overseas uh, because they've seen that I can do it. Maybe you're the person to inspire them to do it. Maybe they're waiting for you to do it and prove it. And so for those who just want nothing to do with it, I wouldn't sacrifice my dreams. I wouldn't sacrifice my principles. I wouldn't sacrifice my life or my fortune, if you think it's that extreme, uh, because someone else doesn't see your vision. You know, when we had Nomad Capitalist Live and we sold out our conference, um, this was people who were so excited to be around like-minded people because they don't have that. It's very hard to find that many like-minded people who understand what you're going through, who share your concerns. And so you know what? You can make new friends. Uh, you'll also realize who your real friends are. I have a, a couple friends that they have, they have flown around the world. I had one friend, he flew like 15 hours nonstop to come and see me one year for my birthday. And uh, I realized, you know, that's what a true friend is like. You realize the people who, you know, listen, I mean, if you weren't 10 miles away, they would kind of, they wouldn't care anymore. And do you need to keep those friends? Uh, I would not sacrifice for that reason. And by the way, I think some people perhaps just enjoy the isolation, but you can bring people with you. You can keep meeting with people. You can go home and see people. You can make new friends. There's so many ways to have family and friends. Now, let's talk about the language barrier. Uh, plenty of countries that speak English, both places where they speak pretty good English, Belgrade and Serbia, for example. I mean, everyone pretty much speaks pretty good English. Um, you may be not going to have the same kind of soulful conversations you would have uh, you know, around the hearth where you're from, but um, you can go there. You can also go to Ireland. You can go to the UK. Uh, you can go to Malta. You can go to Cyprus. Uh, you can go to Belize. Um, you can go to Singapore. A little more difficult these days. Uh, you can go to Malaysia. Uh, those are countries where people pretty much speak English, and there are others. Um, and those are countries where you can get residence permits. You can work your way towards citizenship. If the language barrier is difficult for you, and uh, listen, I understand people are busy. If you're running a business, maybe you don't have that much time to learn a language. Maybe it's difficult for you. Okay, fine. Go to one of those countries. Plenty of them, by the way, have tax incentives. Uh, many of them have good passports that you can work towards, especially if your plan is to, to cut ties at home eventually. Uh, or you can go somewhere and learn a language. Or you can go somewhere and you can function in society. Maybe you're not going to adapt that much. That's why I think the trifecta method is nice. You go between different places and you kind of soak in different cultures. So I think that knowing the local language is very valuable. I think that you can, in many cases, get by without it. More people speak English than you think. Other places like Dubai, the Cayman Islands, all, all the Caribbean uh, for the most part. I mean, you can go and you can speak English or you can learn a language or maybe you'll find out that you don't really need it as much to get around if you're staying at home with your family and friends that you talk about. So I think that's doable. Uh, in terms of lower living conditions in most places, most places have an upscale area. I'm here in Bogota, for example, and whenever people come to visit me, I have some people visiting recently, and I take them down to La Candelaria downtown, and they say, yeah, yeah it looks like it could be a little rough. Um, you come to where I live, it's nice, it's clean, um, things work. You know, you got Starbucks all over the place, you got beautiful cafes, you got restaurants, you got international cuisine. And so you can say the same thing about New York or Chicago or Sydney or London or any other city. There's good areas and there are bad areas. Now, if you don't like the lower living conditions of saying, oh, I don't want to live in that kind of place, well, then I go back to my list of countries. You're going to be hard pressed to say that the living conditions are worse in the UK. Um, and yet you can go there and yet they have tax incentives. Or you can go to Switzerland and <laughs> they have tax incentives. And that's another place where maybe they don't, you know, outwardly you know, say we speak English, but you know, they'll, they'll speak English with you. Parts of Portugal, same thing. I mean, there are plenty of places that have this, this standard of living. Now, it may be different if you're from the US and you're used to um, you know, big strip malls and malls with huge parking lots and lots of open spaces. I mean, it's different, but I think there's a romantic element to going somewhere, let's say in Europe, and things are a bit you know, 
downsized. Um, you know, that can be interesting. And that's part of the adventure. So most places have an upscale area. I mean, you can go to Dhaka, Bangladesh, and there's a really nice area where all the embassies are. You think, you think those guys work in there two hours a day. You think that they're uh, living in squalor when they go live somewhere. Uh, where all the rich people live. I mean, every country has rich people. Cambodia, uh, where I've invested, I mean, there's like 4,000 or 5,000 rich people. Uh, they have a place where they live and they're taken care of. And they have, by the way, the lower the standard of living, the more you can hire the driver, the chef, the, the butler, or what have you. But if you just want to go to a country where, hey, things are more egalitarian, plenty of those countries in places like Europe that also have tax incentives. Uh, and you know what? Listen, <laughs> I don't need to have a lower cost of living, but, uh, you know, I, well, I do enjoy splurging. It's also nice to say on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, life isn't that expensive. You can put more money to work in your business, your investment portfolio, what have you. Uh, and in terms of loss of first world conveniences, this is an issue if you're used to ordering everything on Amazon. Now, I'll tell you this. Uh, I was in Mexico, Mexico City, and I stayed at a place and they had one of these, uh, I don't know if it was Alexa or one of these, you know, these, these smart speakers. Mrs. H and I, we look at each other, we're like, Unplug that thing immediately. I don't want that thing listening to us. Uh, I don't care if I can say, you know, play uh, Miles Davis and it plays Miles Davis. I, I you know, just let's get it out. I'll, I'll go and click the button for Miles Davis. Thank you. Um, so I think that sometimes, you know, when I look at some of the stuff that I've gotten out of, where if I were to keep living in the U.S., I would have all that stuff. I lived in the U.S. I had a car. I had, you know, people in a business like, why don't you have a better car? And it's this, this, there's a kind of a rat race where it's like, you know what? I don't really want a car. Maybe, maybe someday I will. I'll go back to that. But, you know, I don't want a smart speaker. I don't want some, I don't want to push a button under my toilet and the toilet paper arrives three hours later. I mean, it seems a little weird to me. You do have more countries opening up Amazon. Again, if you want to go and get those consumer conveniences, you can get a lot of them in Europe. It's not going to be maybe as, as robust as you'd find in the U.S., but some countries are, are equally robust. But, you know, my point is you may lose some conveniences. You can get Amazon, even here in Colombia, for example. Um, you may lose some conveniences, but for me, it's almost been like a nice thing. As much as I'm a busy guy, I almost kind of enjoy going out and buying a shirt. You know, I have a tailor here in, in, in different cities. Uh, but, you know, if I want a sweater, I don't necessarily want to order online. I kind of like the old school way of doing it. I go out and I try on a sweater and I buy a sweater and it's part of just life. I get out into the world and I don't have to deal with some of the stuff, um, you know, all these, this over uh environment that maybe goes too far in some ways. Uh, but if you want to move to the UAE, you want to move to Singapore, things are pretty zippy there. Um, things work pretty efficiently. You can order stuff online. I mean, there are not only a lot more service in, services than you think in these countries. The services that you have in your country probably don't work quite as well as you think. I have lots of Americans who are like, my internet is really not that good here. Um, and yet, perhaps you would almost enjoy losing some of the conveniences. But if you really want them, you can find places that have them. So for me, the reasons to not move overseas can all be addressed. If you don't want to, I, I fully respect that. But I think that at least dipping a toe in, get a second residence, get a second passport, maybe you buy a house somewhere, have a plan B, commit to spending some amount of time there. And I think as you do it, the more you do, the more you get comfortable, the more you want to do. Um, you know, these are all ways to overcome these fears by going out in there in the world and slowly exploring and realizing that it's not as different as you think. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply, learn about our unique tried and true process, garnered over years of experience, and learn how you can become our client.